In this video, I'm going to go through the worked out solutions for numbers 4 through 7 in the review packet. That is the back of the first page. So looking at this uh, number 4, it's asking me to graph the function. And when I look at this, I see that I have two sets of parentheses. I have an x and an x. Nothing's being squared. So I know that this is in intercept form. I know that when it's in intercept form, the very first thing that I can identify are the x-intercepts. So step one is to find the x-intercepts. To do that, I let y equal zero. And now I need to solve. I recognize that this is a product of two factors. And so I can use a zero product property and say that, well, that's kind of like a negative one. I could say negative one equals zero, but it's never going to equal zero. But x plus 4 could equal 0, and x plus 1 could equal 0. And when I solve, I find that x would have to be negative 4, or x would have to be negative 1 in order for us to have an x-intercept. So I go to plot those points. I have negative 1 and negative 4, comma 0. All right, I know that my next step is to figure out where the vertex is. And before I can figure out the vertex, I'm going to need to find the axis of symmetry because I know that the vertex lies on the axis of symmetry. There are a couple different ways that I can do this. I can either recognize that the axis of symmetry is going to be the average of the two x-intercepts. So x equals negative 4 plus negative 1 and divide that by 2 and get that x equals negative 2.5. Or I just look at my graph and I know that this graph is symmetrical. So the vertex has to be somewhere in the middle of these two guys. So my axis of symmetry is going to cut down right down the middle because the axis of symmetry shows us the line over which the graph is symmetrical. And I can just look and see that that's x equals negative 2.5 as well. And I didn't have to do this work. And then finally, the whole point of finding the axis of symmetry is because I know that the vertex lies on the axis of symmetry. In order to figure out the coordinates, I have to think through this. Well, the vertex is on here, and I know that every point on this line has an x-coordinate of negative 2.5, which means the x-coordinate of my vertex must be negative 2.5. i got to figure out what the y-coordinate is, though. I don't know where it is along this line. Well, I guess I, I know a little bit. It's, the graph is opening down because we have a negative value out here, so I know that it must be somewhere up here in order for the graph to open down, but I don't know exactly where. In order to figure that out, I'm going to find the vertex by substituting in that x-coordinate into the equation. So I have negative, negative 2.5 plus 4 times negative 2.5 plus 1. When I go to simplify that, that's really like a negative 1. So I'm just multiplying negative 1 times a positive 1.5 times a negative 1.5. And when I go to multiply those together, negative 1 times uh, a positive 1.5 is a negative 1.5, and then I'm multiplying that times another negative 1.5, and when I do that, I should get a positive 2.25. So my vertex is negative 2.5 comma 2.25. So 1, 2.25, there we go. If I'd like to get another point, just to get a better shape of the graph, um, I can substitute in to find another point on the graph, and I think I would choose x equals 0. Find that y-intercept. So let's see what that would be. So step 4, finding an extra point. Um, we're going to let x equal 0, so y equals a negative 0 plus 4 times 0 plus 1. Well, that's negative 1 times 4 times 1, which is a negative 4, which means I have the point 0 comma negative 4 I can plot on this graph. So I go to 0, negative 4, and that kind of helps me get a better shape of the graph. Now I know that because this is symmetrical, I can go to the other side. If I go in two and a half, I go two and a half more to that side. And now that gives me a much better shape of my graph. All right, so now I'm going over here and it's asking me for my domain. Well, when I look at this, because all of the x value goes from negative infinity to positive infinity or all the way to the left and all the way to the right, I know my domain is all real numbers. My range are my y values, and I know that the y values have a maximum here. The graph is opening down, so we have a highest y value. That highest y value is at that vertex, and we know that the vertex is negative 2.5 comma 2.25. So that y value, the highest y value is 2.25. All the other y values are below that. So we have y is less than or equal to 
2.25. The only other thing we have to do is describe the transformations of this function from the parent function, and what I recognize first is where the vertex is. I know this time my vertex is at negative 2.5 comma 2.25, which means I went to the left 2.5, and I went up 2.25 from the parent function. So the first thing I'm going to write down is translate left 2.5 units and up 2.25 units. But I know there's another transformation. This graph is opening down, which means it was reflected in the x-axis, and that negative is what did that. So we also have a reflection in the x-axis. Now I also have to ask myself, is this vertically stretched or vertically shrink from the parent function? And in order to determine that, I look at that a value. And because the magnitude is 1, meaning I don't see another number besides that negative, that is the same steepness or the same width as the parent function. So I don't have to worry about a vertical stretch or shrink this time. And I'm finished with number 4. Moving on to number 5. Consider this equation. Okay, so when I'm looking at this equation, before I even am asked any questions, there's a couple things I want to recognize. I'm looking at this, and I want to identify what form it's in. I think this is in vertex form because I see something being squared. So I'm going to write down that I know that this is vertex form. And vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. That's what I'm thinking through in my head. So now I can jump to here. What is the vertex? Well, I know that the vertex... Um, will be at h comma k, or I can recognize that that minus 4 inside translates it to the right 4 units, and that plus 7 translates up 7. So if I'm going to go right 4 and up 7, my vertex is going to be at 4 comma 7. Now it's asking me for the axis of symmetry. Now some of us have this memorized, but I don't really memorize a whole lot of things. I try and reason through them. So I'm going to go to my graph. I'm just going to draw a little sketch. It might be helpful. My vertex is at 1, 2, 3, 4, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we're at right here. Now let's get a shape of the graph. I see that that's positive, so my graph is going to be opening up, so that's what our graph looks like. Now I know the axis of symmetry goes right through the middle, right through that vertex. So as I'm thinking through what the equation for the axis of symmetry is, I'm thinking, well, if I know that that's um, where I can picture it, then that's all the points where x is 4, or it'll have an equation x equals 4. Will the graph open up or down? Well, we already kind of answered that. We have a positive value out here. We don't see a minus sign, so that's going to stay opening up. So we're going to say up. Then the next question is how many x-intercepts does the graph have? Now, I'm going to be honest. If I didn't have uh, a graph, I'd have to do a little bit of work to recognize this. But I have a graph right here. The vertex is above the x-axis, and the graph is opening up, so there are not going to be any x-intercepts. Or it says how many. So I guess rather than writing no, I should write zero. There are none. Now let's say I didn't look at the graph. You know there's always multiple ways to do uh, any problem. I could... Go ahead and take the equation, and I know my x-intercept is when y equals 0. So I could go to this equation and say 0 equals 3 times x minus 4 quantity squared plus 7. And as I start to solve this, I subtract 7 from each side. I get negative 7 equals 3 times the quantity x minus 4 squared. Divide by 3, and go back up here, I get negative 7 thirds equals x minus 4 squared. And now to solve for x, I need to square root both sides. But the problem is, when I go to square root this, I know that I cannot square root a negative. There is no number squared that's going to be a negative number unless it's an imaginary number. And we don't worry about that till algebra 2. So, there is no real solution here, which means there are not going to be any x-intercepts. So, going down to the next one, it says consider this function. I recognize this function is also in vertex form. So, the vertex well, this plus 9 will translate it to the left 9, and then we don't add or subtract anything there, so my vertex is going to be at negative 9 comma 0. If you like to identify what a, h, and k are, my a is the number being multiplied out front, h is whatever I'm subtracting from x, and if I see a plus 9, that means I must be subtracting a negative 9, and k is whatever I add at the end, so I'm kind of adding an imaginary 0, if you will, and that's k equals 0. Again, let's go ahead and really quickly sketch a graph. So our vertex is at negative 9, comma 0, negative 9, 0. We'll just say that guy right there. Uh, we have a negative out front this time, so our graph has been reflected in the x-axis. 
So now when I go over here asking for the equation for the axis of symmetry, I know that the axis of symmetry goes right through the middle there. And that happens to be the line where x equals negative 9. Does the graph open up or down? Well, this time, because we have a negative out front, it's going to open down. It's been reflected in the x-axis. How many x-intercepts does the graph have? Well, I can go back to the graph. I look at it. The vertex is the x-intercept. So this time, there is only one. But again, you don't have to look at a graph. Sometimes I think graphs are um, make the problem easier. You could always go back to your equation. And I know that y equals 0 for my x-intercept. So if I go back to my equation and I solve here, I start doing inverse operations. I divide both sides by negative 0.4. Ah. Um, over here, I would get that divides to be 1. 0 equals x plus 9 squared. If I continue doing inverse operations and I take the square root, the square root of 0 is just 0. And as I solve, I see that x equals negative 9 for the x-intercept, which happens to be the vertex. But we see that there's only one possibility. So x equals negative 9 uh, is the x-coordinate of the x-intercept. So there's one solution, or sorry, one x-intercept. Um, on the test, I might ask for zeros or roots. But realize that x-intercepts, another word for those are roots or zeros. They all mean the same thing. All right, and then for the final problem on this page, number seven. <coughs> excuse me. Looking at number seven, it asked me to write an equation that would model the table both in vertex form and intercept form. Whenever I'm asked to write an equation that models a table, I try and look for the pattern in the table. Uh, because depending on what the pattern is, the equation will look different. So looking at this one, I notice that x tends to be increasing by one each time. And as x increases by one, I'm looking at the y values here. I subtract six, I subtract two, I add two, I add six, I add 10. Now remember, if I wasn't sure, especially with these negatives, like here, I didn't know what I needed to do to go from negative eight to negative six. In my calculator, I could type negative six minus negative eight, and it would give me a positive two. Or I could do any number minus this previous one. Negative eight minus negative six will give me a negative two. So just be aware of that, that you can always do that uh, if we aren't sure how to do the mental math. To go from negative six to negative two, Either in my calculator, I type negative 2 minus negative 6, or I just do mental math and recognize that I would have to add 4. And each time, I'm recognizing I'm adding 4. So I know when I see adding the same number each time for the second difference, this is quadratic. This is a common second difference. So because it's quadratic, I can write it in vertex form or intercept form. To write it in vertex form, i got to find the vertex. So vertex form, I'm looking for the vertex. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. I can first look at the table and I know that the vertex is where the table is going to be symmetrical about. In other words, I see the same number here and here, here and here. I go right in the middle. That's going to be my vertex. I could also look and see where are we changing from decreasing to increasing because where that changes is where that vertex is going to be. Now, in order to write the equation in vertex form, not only do I need the vertex, I also need the a value because remember vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. The h and k come from my vertex. The vertex is positive 5 comma negative 8. I know in the parentheses I'm going to need a minus 5, and my k value will be negative 8. But I need that a value. To get that, I remember that the second difference divided by 2 will give me my a value. So I'm just going to write this over here. a is always equal to the second difference divided by 2. So in this case, a is equal to 4 divided by 2 or 2. So I'm going to put a 2 out front here. I also know that I can often write equations in intercept form when I have quadratic equations. So to write an equation in intercept form, I'm thinking, well, what information do I need from this table? Well, because I know that intercept form is y equals a times x minus p times x minus q, I know that I need the x-intercepts. And the x-intercepts from a table are where y is 0. So here's one x-intercept, and here's the other x-intercept. I'll underline that in pink because I know that information is crucial to me. So I have y equals, I still have the same a value. This time, in order to get an x-intercept of 3, I know that I need x minus 3 in my equation. To get an x-intercept of 7, I need an x minus 7. And there is my equation in intercept form. 
The next table we're going to do very similarly. Again, I always want to check to make sure I recognize what pattern it is because you never know when you're going to be asked for an uh, equation and maybe it's exponential or maybe it's linear or maybe it's absolute value. So going here, I uh, what is that? Adding 2.5 here, it looks like I am adding 1.5. Now I'm adding a half. Now we're subtracting a half, so I can recognize we're going from increasing to decreasing. Minus 1.5. This is not constant, so I know it's not absolute value. In fact, when I look at the second difference, I recognize that I subtract 1, subtract 1, subtract 1. I have a common second difference again, which tells me it's quadratic. So when I go to write it in vertex form, I know I need the vertex. So I'm going to circle that in blue. It's where it changes from de increasing to decreasing or where we are symmetrical about it in the table. So there's my vertex. So my equation here, y equals, remember my a value is the second difference divided by two. So negative one divided by two is just a negative one half. So we have negative one half times, the vertex is one comma two. So I'm gonna have an x minus one squared and then a plus two. Intercept form, just like the name tells us, we need our intercepts and uh, specifically our x-intercepts, I th see three comma zero is one x-intercept, negative one comma zero is the other one. So when I write my equation, the a value stays the same. Because it's a negative one, I'm gonna need an x plus one in my equation, and because it's a positive three, I need an x minus three. And now we've had the equation in both forms.